going to do is uh, I'm just going to stand and talk, and get, talk to you a little bit about what you think about the new school. Yeah, I do want to say. Let's go. Well, listen, hello, Seminoles. How do you like our new school board and goal post? Come out for the game this Saturday and look us over. It's good enough. First of all, we really wanted to win it. This is a magical place to play in. You know, a lot of things happen, good and bad. And in the four years I've been here, there's been a lot of things happening, most of them for the better. It's a touching, you know, night. And we played FAMU on the night, and that made, that made it all the more important. I think it will uh, probably make a lot of difference in our program. I think, uh, for one thing, uh, maybe it will attract a, a lot more people who haven't really come to Tully Gym because uh, it's such a small place to play and they have trouble. If it's a big game, they think they won't be able to get seats and it's packed and hot and crowded. So I think it will be a kind of a significant change. It will be a little bit more of a uh, uh, well, it'd be a different atmosphere, a little bit classier type thing, a real fine place to play, a beautiful place to play. I think it'd be something everybody will take a lot of pride in, in the city and in the school. All right, we'll practice at Tully Gym, and this is a great practice place. Uh, we have a lot of room here, a lot of baskets, and it's a good place to practice. Uh, and we will practice here. Now, of course, uh, when uh, the Virginia Tech got through the ball, uh, 
I set a new record, an 89 foot shot. That's something that just doesn't happen any place. I, I particularly remember one game though, I guess when we were playing Louisville my first year here, uh, we were 10 points down with two minutes to go and came back and I had a chance to win right at the last. And the crowd here made so much noise that it seemed almost, uh, when Louisville would shoot a free throw, almost uh, the sound <laughs> waves almost just knocked the ball out of the basket area. But uh, the crowd really, especially our pep band here, is just, they're all great basketball fans and they've made a tremendous amount of noise here. But the reason why I feel this way is I, I believe in opportunities for all people, men and women, and it certainly was a situation in the state of Florida that the women were not getting their equal share or even a fair share. And there was a situation of either we were going to have to take away from our men's programs at all of our state university system or else cut into academics or do something or drop programs. Uh, so it was a question of really coming up with some long-range plans for what we were going to do and to rid the disparity in our women's programs. And there were a lot of people that helped. There were boosters, uh, both men's boosters, women's boosters, uh, certainly Herb Morgan, you've heard of his support. The governor was very supportive. and. Uh, consequently, we have parity in the state of Florida. We enjoy right now being the only state in the nation that has rid disparity in, in our women's athletic programs, and I'm very proud to be a part of the state of Florida. As a matter of fact, they are inviting some of our legislators and myself and some other women's athletic directors to speak at different places about what we have done to try to help the situation throughout the nation. And it is really a matter of whether your daughters are as important as your sons at pursuing a God-given talent, which is what athletics is, just like music or drama or art. And it's just a matter of, of where your priorities are. Are your daughters going to be treated the same as your sons?
The United States Supreme Court recently made a decision uh, concerning affirmative action. Dr. Grooms, exactly what was that decision? Uh, the case of um, Weber versus Kaiser Aluminum was determined that it is legitimate for corporations or institutions to have voluntary affirmative action programs designed to correct historical patterns of underutilization and discrimination. In this particular case, Weber, a white employee, believed that he had been discriminated against because there had been 50 percent positions in a training program set aside for blacks and the remaining 50 percent set aside for whites. And he felt that some of the persons who were accepted in the training program in the black category did not have as much seniority and whatever than he did, so he felt like it was discrimination. But the Supreme Court said that whenever in that instance, whenever cooperation was involved with taking voluntary action to make um, corrections or restitution for historical patterns of discrimination, then it's legitimate. And um, so it simply reinforces the posture that we at Florida State has had for quite a while. We realize that benign neutrality is not enough. If indeed there are problems that must be corrected, you must take deliberate actions to make sure that there are that well, in fact, that there is evidence of, of some kind of correction.